So let's have a look at Tesla. We know that the shares went down almost 8% yesterday after the, the rumored of the delayed of the robot taxi unveiling because that was, uh, I think, uh, scheduled for the 8th of August. So the rumors are that it's going to be postponed and it's a very interesting and dynamic time if you're an investor in Tesla. If you remember, I made a video back in March of this year where I kind of felt that the stock was quite, uh, not necessarily undervalued, but you know, there was a nice opportunity to, to grab some shares of the stock. And ever since, the stock kind of has been going quite a bit up. It's been, you know, up over almost like, you know, at the levels of 260, 270 US dollar. And since that sharp drop yesterday, we are now, you know, back in 236 now in the pre-market for today. Now, as I said, it's a very dynamic market right now. You know, a lot of the tech stocks has been going up. Tesla was kind of not going up quite a bit like the NVIDIAs and other AI stocks. But we know that the CPI numbers that came in yesterday points a picture where, you know, it's we are getting close to the rate cuts. And with rate cuts come, you know, easier access to uh, private loans for uh, for consumers. And that's going to enable, you know, Tesla to essentially sell more cars. So if you look at this, you know, Excel sheet, we can see that these are Tesla's delivery over the past, uh, you know, few quarters. And you can see that it's been kind of increasing ever since Q1 of 2021. Q, Q1 of 2024 was not as great as expected, but that was quite uh, partly due to a few hiccups in the production in Germany and other stuff happening in uh, the Chinese production line. But we can see that the Q2 delivery kind of surprised the market by a bit. Uh, these numbers were relieved, I think, uh, by end of uh, by early this month. So this was a bit surprised and kind of helped the stock to rebound in addition to the supposed, you know, uh, what's supposed to be the August 8th reveal of uh, robo taxis. What that would mean, to be honest. I'm not a, although I've been a Tesla bull for at least the last five, six years, I've never bought the, you know, the idea of FSD. I think there are these hyper bulls that, you know, fully believe that the Tesla FSD will be on the streets any day for the past five, six years and every year is coming next year. So I think, you know, I do think that Tesla has a competitive advantage in FSD, but I do think that, you know, we are most likely years away from that. And it's uh, the regulatory process uh, that's going to be needed in in order to the, you know, for the insurance and uh, all the regulations that are out there to allow these cars driving themselves is going to be a long, tedious process. And again, I do believe that Tesla has the upper hand here. It's just I think that the Uber bulls like Cathy Woods uh, and uh, ARK Invest are maybe way, way too over op optimistic about that. So my valuation on Tesla, although still like bullish, it's uh, not based on the FSD. But yeah, so I think there's room for the, you know, the delivery and production to go up quite a bit in Q2 this year and going into Q4, uh, let's say 2025. I do believe that there's a possibility to exceed over half a million of deliveries in Q4 this year. As I said, you know, as the CPI continues to kind of cool down and you can see that the inflation is getting quite back to normal levels, uh, at least there's a path to that. The interest rates will go down, the consumer will be stronger. So I do expect, you know, maybe 500, even like in the bull case, 550,000 cars delivered in um, Q4 this year. And that's going to, you know, improve the gross profits for, uh, for let's say, the, the automotive segment. You can see that the automotive sales kind of, been going down over the past two quarters in terms of revenue, not only due to the fact that, you know, the delivery, especially in Q1 was down, but also, you know, the average selling price is kind of going down. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, that's compared to, you can see that average selling price over the past, let's say 10 quarters or, or something like that. It's, it went from around 50, 55,000 to now 40, 45,000 US dollar. And that's normal, you know, as the more people buy the you know, Model 3s and Model Ys compared to the Model, 3, uh, Model S and Model Xs. As the Model 3 and Model Y are fully com uh, like, uh, compatible and good cars, I drive the Model 3 my myself and I think it's a really, really good car. Although there are other problems with it, but, you know, most, most, most consumers don't care about the fit and finish, you know, uh, panel gaps and all those kind of stuff. As long as you have the big iPad in the middle in the infotainment system, system that is... Uh, really good i think tesla's infotainment is amazing compared to most other cars but yeah again on the engineering point of view i'm an engineer myself i think like you know i i see the critics of tesla you know when i talk about fit and finish and uh, uh, you know uh, 
panel gaps and all these quality issues but i think that's not as important as the you know the advantages that tesla has with their driveline and access to you know now they are delivering almost one and a half two million cars every year so the numbers are just you know helping them to have a good gross margin and economies of scale in addition to that the tesla cars are very simplistic and minimalistic so they you know they reduce on the cost for the interior quite a bit and i think that's going to help them to have continue to have the best gross margins of any car manufacturer going onwards and this is without as i said you know the fsd and all those you know robot taxi stuff that the extreme bulls are talking about so yeah i think like by going let's say by q4 of 2025 so a year and a half from now things are getting really interesting because i do for sure expect that you know by by that time that the consumers are really strong globally not only in the us maybe we're gonna see something like you know 600 650,000 cars sold uh, you know a globally per quarter at that time i do think that's gonna you know bring in record-breaking automotive sales maybe let's say 24 25 billion us dollar maybe even more 26 billion us dollar in automotive sales I expect that the gross uh, gross profit that we'll see from you know the supposed 650,000 cars sold in Q4, let's say 2025, that's gonna be, let's say at you know four to six billion, maybe seven billion US dollar, because there's also the fact that the lithium carbonate price has been going down quite a bit over the you know past two or three years. I, if you follow my channel, you know that I check this lithium carbonate price, and you can see that. It just keeps going down and at the peaks of the price in 2021 and 2022 it was like six to five times higher than the price right now and that's going to affect you know all car manufacturers electric car manufacturers and their gross margins so i do expect you know a lot of positives you know the economies of scale the price reduction of the, the lithium carbonate going into the battery which is a huge part of the cost for the cars so I see Tesla's like automotive, uh, let's say gross margin, kind of going closer to 20% again, maybe not the 30% that they had, you know, at the peaks of 2021, where there was like one years of lead time for electric cars and the demand was through the roof. I do not expect 30% anytime soon in auto GM, but I do expect like possibilities of 20, maybe 22, 23% uh, gross margin for automotive business. And that's still, you know, we have still not talked about the battery energy storage, which is my main, like, you know, interest right now with Tesla. So just to finish off the, let's say, automotive part of the video, we can see that, you know, 650,000 of sales in Q2 next year, sorry, Q4 2025. I do expect, you know, let's say, let's go with 6 billion of gross profit for, for that number. And then let's go to the... So, Put your, in your mind the six billion uh, for gross profit for the automotive. Now let's go to the uh, energy storage, essentially battery energy storage and a very small segment that is, you know, also the the solar, so the photovoltaic systems. Now Tesla has been increasing their uh, manufacturing capacity uh, for the battery energy storage. You can see that you know they shipped uh, 845 megawatt hours in Q1 of 2022. And it's a nice steady increase ever since. And they just reported their deliveries of energy storage uh, for Q2 of 2024 at 9,400 megawatts. So 9.4 gigawatt hours for this past quarter. And we know that the, the factory, we can see that the factories that they have, these are the gigafactories for the cars and these are for energy storage. The Latrop California factory is essentially fully ramped up or almost fully ramped up. And they started recently building their Shanghai one with the same uh, annual capacity. We do expect the Shanghai uh, factory to be um, essentially finalized by end of this year and start to produce, uh, let's say, at full capacity by end of next year. So that gives us around 80 gigawatt hours, maybe 100 gigawatt hours, if they squeak, uh, squeeze out a bit more, a couple of other lines on the Latrop uh, California factory by end of next year with a bit of expansion. That's gonna leave us, you know, with let's say capacity of 20 gigawatt hours, so 2000 megawatt hours, 20,000 megawatt hours by Q4 next year, or maybe e even higher, like by the year after that, that's 35 to 40 gigawatt hours. 
and that's important because you can kind of extrapolate how much revenue they're gonna bring in with those kind of you know uh, with that kind of deliveries and it's quite easy like if you go to the web page you can see that if you select the mega packs obviously <laughs> i'm not gonna order like a thousand mega packs but it's gonna be like one billion us dollar sadly i don't have that amount of money but if you look at it so around 1000 mega, pa mega packs with uh, uh, gives you like four four thousand uh, megawatt hours roughly four four gigawatt hours of energy storage capacity and you can see that uh, that's gonna be quite like easy to uh, calculate then from you know if you have let's say by q4 next year let's say if we deliver like at full capacity so 10 gigawatt hours from california and 10 from the shanghai factory so that's like roughly you know five times five and a half times this amount so you know uh, that would be around five and a half billion us dollar if you take you know nine nine hundred fifty million times five and a half that's between five and a half six billion us dollar in revenue now i went you know with the lower end maybe even this number is a tad optimistic difficult to say but if you go with that number and then if we assume a slight let's say so essentially what i have done i've, I've taken the five and a half billion us dollar in revenue for solar business and uh, for the battery energy storage and then i kind of increased the uh, the margins around 10 percent 10 to 12 percent in terms of the cost of the manufacturing as to you know you get economies of scale so the gross profit for um, sorry the cost of revenue is obviously going to increase as you increase your production as well the cost of the material input into your batteries goes up but then the interesting part is that once you remove the you know once you have your revenue you remove the cost of revenue for the battery energy storage and the solar systems you should have around 1.9 billion us dollar gross profit only from the battery energy storage uh, segment by q4 of next year already if we are at full capacity and delivery and uh, that's an if but i mean i think it's possible and why i do say it's possible you know i think that uh, the demand is for sure out there you know the i wouldn't say infinite but it's close to infinite demand for right now for battery energy storage and these are not private people these are like big infrastructure companies and states buying these kind of products so they are not nearly as uh, you know sensitive to a restricted uh, restricted economy let's to say like so they are not as dependent on you know the indian interest rate these these are like big major players and they have a lot of money to invest in infrastructure so the demand is definitely out there we can see that this other company that i followed uh, a while back canadian solar one of the biggest uh, solar um, solar panel manufacturers on the planet and they recently also ventured into the energy storage with their e-storage brand and these are you know their numbers for 2022 in north america and then you can see that tesla according to their own uh, data of canadian solar that tesla is holding 25 percent of the north american market for battery energy storage and these are you know the projected global energy storage capacity graph and you can see that you know it's going to grow roughly 30 percent a year for the upcoming 10 years so it's like as i said like almost infinite kind of demand so as long as tesla can you know increase their their manufacturing capacity in california and maybe uh, as well uh, ramp up in shanghai quite uh, nicely i think we can see maybe let's say if you're a bit uh, more conservative even at like 15 megawatt hours ship 15,000 megawatt hour ships for q4 next year we still would have around one and a half billion of gross profit coming from you know that business and why is that important but look at it you know already like by the reported numbers that we had for q1 this year we had 3.7 billion in gross profit for entire of tesla's business so that means that you know at this kind of number at this kind of you know 15,000 uh, megawatt hours uh, of q4 of next year of battery energy storage tesla could have essentially 50 percent of their own gross profit coming from the battery battery energy storage business but again, as I said, you know, remember that I expect Tesla's automotive business to grow quite nicely by Q4 next year to around 600 to 650,000 cars. I would assume anywhere between five to six billion gross profit as the, you know, the cost structure, the economies of scale increase. So if you take the six, uh, roughly six billion US dollar of gross profit from the automotive business next year, Q4, add to that around one and a half to two billion from the battery energy storage systems. 
that's 8 billion in gross profit and usually they you can see that you know once they have the better margins they have more than you know 50 percent of their gross profit in in you know net profit after tax and you know r d and sgna so but if we assume not as good as you know obviously the q q1 of 2022 as i said the, the demand back then was through the roof with one year or 18 months of delivery time for electric cars so if we these numbers i think as uh, this ratio is a bit too good to be true i think but if we go to let's say with um, let's say with uh, yeah this one like so that would be q2 of 2023 by that by that time you know the demand was not nearly as much as it was a year before that so i would still say like it's 50 percent of the gross profit ends up in net profit but let's let's go with 40 percent let's go with 40 percent so again we take 20 2 billion from gross profit so 2 billion gross profit from battery energy storage six from the uh, automotive business that eight so if we take 40 percent times 8 billion that's 3.2 billion in net profit for tesla on a quarterly basis by next year q4 and this is again no no segment of that no part of that is from the you know the tesla uh, robot taxi business or fsd and i do expect tesla also to improve their uh, their margins you know on the uh, let's say services because as times go on and as tesla continues to deliver more cars their out of warranty car fleet increases as well and that's uh, also one of the main disadvantages of tesla historically because you know if you work with car companies one of the main important segments of their income is not necessarily the new cars they sell is actually the amount of money that they get in on the reserve uh, you know on the service of older cars you know the cars out of warranties and uh, if something breaks down you know if you if you have a let's say your disc break disc goes down then they buy a new one from you and that's where you make a lot of money and margin especially the legacy business like volkswagen volvo mercedes bmw so as tesla becomes more and more you know let's say kind of like the legacy brands you know with older and older fleet uh, yeah that's gonna also improve their uh, their margins a bit so let's 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 do to that fact say that we still would have 50 percent of the gross profit as net uh, net uh, profit of the tax and r d and sgna i do think that tesla would make roughly 4 billion of net profit per quarter and that's annualized to 16 billion so if we go to the company now so we have the market cap of 768 billion roughly so, le so let's take 768 billion divided by 16 that would give us a forward PE ratio of 48. So I wouldn't say that Tesla is insanely expensive for a like you know very fast growing company. But you know if this price would be if the stock price would now be closer to the you know let's say at the time that I made the video in March 160. So let's do the same calculation again. Uh, 160. So the stock price is now do, 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 what was it again 240 let's say 240 divided by 160. So that's one and a half yeah so the PE ratio right now is 48 but at the price that we had you know 160 roughly that would make it the um, around 32 so 32 times earnings so th that's why i kind of felt you know the price there was much more uh, price of the stock was much more uh, favorable to purchase but i i don't think like this is a huge historic bubble that some of the critics say but maybe you know hopefully there's a let's say larger pullback again in the coming uh, two months because of you know the, the supposed delayed of the uh, robot taxi event if that happens then i will definitely at you know if we are looking at 200 and let's say 15 210 us dollar look at tesla again because remember when you are investing you're investing for the future so we are already in q3 essentially of this year so when i invest i have at least a two three four years horizon and the good part about that, that Tesla's energy business is going to increase so fast now. Again, the demand is insane. Demand for like, there's no doubt about demand for energy storage business. I mean, I mean, the moment you manufacture, you essentially sell them. The only maybe problem with that business is that sometimes it's a bit, uh, you know, the delivery of the of the batteries are a bit, you know, unequal. Like sometimes some years, like you get a huge delivery like we had now 
in Q2 and then maybe there's a drop off in this second quarter following that but if you average it out if you look at these numbers again you can see that you know for every like you know for example Q2 of uh, 2022 was 1.1 uh, gigawatt hours roughly a year later in Q2 of 2023 that was like three three and a half times more so it's uh, sorry two two and a half times more so it's uh, yeah it's growing very fast and at this kind of number you know now we're going to get a gross profit of uh, if you do the same kind of calculations again like increase the margins of it now maybe these gross margins in the longest of the of the term will obviously come down because of the competition but i think like in the first two or three four years from now i think there's room for actual you know gross margins of 30 35 even 40 percent if the volume is big enough but then obviously that would decrease as time goes closer to 2028 20, 2029 20, because of competition because no other this is such a like easy market to get into compared to let's say the automotive it's much more difficult to build a car than a just big pack of back battery essentially at least in theory so yeah i think like you know the gross profit from this kind of 35 gigawatt hours but to be able to sell that kind of amount they need obviously to increase their energy manufacturing capacity but i think that's fully possible i think that's two and a half years from now so yeah that's uh, that's uh, kind of possible and you know if you have four 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 or five billion of gross profit only from this segment and then by q4 of 2026 tesla is maybe selling at least 700,000 cars a quarter you know they're gonna have mid nice margins maybe like i don't know i would say maybe 12 to 15 billion let's say 12 billion of gross profit by 2026 on a quarterly basis and if you take half of that in net profit that's like what i would say yeah five to six billion and that's like 20 to 25 billion of net profit for a company that sits right now at 700 or 800 billion us dollar and still is projected to grow so i think you know tesla is in my opinion it's kind of fairly valid right now but then i leave the fsd you know to others to solve because i don't believe we're gonna have fsd anytime soon at least not in a manner that you know is gonna bring in a lot of money i think it's uh, tesla has advantage so i'm not uh, i'm still a bull on tesla but i think like realistically it's a bit out uh, still so yeah that's gonna do it for today i think like uh, be careful with tesla and uh, uh, but also be cautious and you know if you if you if there comes an opportunity and the stock goes back you know to around 200 maybe that's a good opportunity in the long term to buy the stock but this is not investment advice thank you for watching i appreciate it and please like and subscribe the video and see you in the next one